Bookcase and Coffee presents Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. Hey everyone, welcome to a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and joining me on this episode is podcast contributor Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Becky. And you didn't wear your unicorn earphones for us today. No, no these, the adult ones fit a little better. I still smile. I was re-listening to the episode, the small town episode. <laughs> anyway, we're fools. It's fine. <laughs> um, on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Take Me Home, book one in the Heartbreak Brothers series by Carrie Elks. Jenny, would you mind reading us the synopsis from Goodreads? A Grammy-winning rock star falls for a small-town girl in this all-new standalone romance from Carrie Elts. Gray Hartson is coming home. After years of playing to sold-out stadiums around the world, the tattooed singer is determined to build bridges with his sick father and reconnect with the family he left behind. But then he meets her, a beautiful waitress with a smart mouth who makes him laugh more than he has in years. One small problem. She's his ex-girlfriend's sister, the only woman he can't have. Maddie Clark was an awkward teenager when Gray left. Now she slings hash in a backwater diner, her dreams of being a famous concert pianist left in tatters. Don't ask her why, she'll never tell. Strong women do what it takes to keep a roof over their heads until he walks through the door and complicates everything. Their attraction is wrong, but foolish hearts never listen to reason. Maybe he should write a song about that. Take Me Home is the first book in the Heartbreak Brothers series of emotional standalone romances set in a small town of Hartson's Creek. So the release date on this is April of 2021. It is a small town romance. Siblings, best friend, forbidden, rock star, and a slow burn. Um, the series is the Hartston Heartbreak Brothers, and this is the first book. And it is a series of interconnected standalones. Put out percentage was 51%. Uh, you should have a content warning of mention of past sexual assault. So let's talk about this first. Can we talk about the small town? Because I mentioned it in our small town episode. Yes. Hartston Creek is named after the family that the brothers belong to. Right. Which is, yeah, weird. And they don't seem to be, like, too appreciative of it. <laughs> they really aren't. Um, and it's small town, rural Virginia, close enough that they're within, like, two hours drive of Charleston, West Virginia. So, you know, a little mountainous, but rural. Um, the town has a thing that they do every Friday night, except during high school football season. Right. And it's, I mean, this is where you go to get the gossip, the food. Yeah. All the things they, um, so every Friday night they get their chairs and their lemonade and their snacks. And they head to this open field near the Creek and set up camp and you section off into your groups. The old people chat together. The kids play ball in the field. The young people gather and it is where all the gossip is shared. It's what makes like, that's what I want in small town romance chairs. Yeah. Yeah. I think you like said something about like, you want the small town to be like a person and the chairs is because yeah. it's even like italicized in a book like it's a title yeah um so let's talk about gray hartson he is the oldest of five siblings um he has four three brothers three brothers and a sister so he is the fifth child um the sister is the baby and as soon as he turned 18 he left hartson creek he could not leave fast enough Right. He was, yeah, he was ready to find something new. Yeah. His father had been widowed. His mother died, I think, cancer, correct? I think. Yes. His mother passed yes. when he was like 15 and his father never got over the grief of losing his wife. Right. And he, I mean, 
as a child, you always see things differently than you do when you're an adult. And um, he kind of gets a glimpse that makes things change a little bit for him. He does. And so, you know, he has this really tumultuous relationship with his father and he does not want to stay in Hartson Creek. He wants to leave and go out to the world. He has dreams of being a musician and being a paid musician. And it happens. He strikes it big. Um, and now the time has come that he's returning home. His sister, his dad has had a bout of illness and his sister has asked as his world tour is ending to bring, to take some time and to come home that they, they need to see him. He needs to visit. They need some help. And so he is kind of the returning conqueror to the small hometown and it's big news, it's huge news. big news that he's cut, that he's home. Right. First day that he's home, he goes to church with his aunt who happens to live with the family and helped raise him after his mother died. It's his mom's sister. So yes, he goes to church. Which is an interesting. Yeah. Relationship. Yeah. And I did read the whole series and I don't feel like I got enough conclusion on that. So anyway, Anyway, um, <laughs> so he goes to church with his aunt and things have spread that he is in the church and all of the teens that are in the church are filming and all of the teens that are not in church are outside waiting for him. Like they just, they want him. They want to touch him. And um, Maddie, who is our heroine, who also happens to be the younger sister of Gray's ex girlfriend high school sweetheart but i don't even know if they yes. were high school were they high school sweethearts well they were like high school convenience partners <laughs> maybe yeah that that fits a little better um so maddie works at the diner across the square from the church she sees the hubbub at the church wanders <laughs> over sees the pastor and says what's going on and he says i need to get gray hartson out of the church and these people need to go away. And she's like, I'll help. So she because she has lots of experience on escaping to church. She does. Hilarious. So she like helps him get out. They climb over walls, through backyards, through fences. And thus they meet again. <laughs> <laughs> but she gives him not her real name. Right. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's like Clarabelle or Cora. something. Isn't it Cora? Cora? Yeah, that makes more sense. And um, so she gives him the wrong name and is like, my name is Cora. And he is like, okay. So he goes and he starts talking to his brothers and his sister about Cora. And they're like, That's Cora not- climbed fences? Because <laughs> she's like 90. <laughs> um, But their relationship is pretty... There's a lot of push and pull between the two of them. They are definitely both attracted to each other for sure. Right. And Maddie has like that, like kind of unrequented, like love of um, Ray, but she's, she's also seen that he's a different person. And then there's the like tension of like, is it okay to date your sister's ex-boyfriend? Well, and her her sister Ashley, his ex girlfriend, is not is not good. She's not a good person. Um, right. Like I, in my notes, I put like WTF. Like, what is her deal? Like, she is just she's very. You know, she married up and she married out, and she's all about appearances and you know, and very much like queen of high school goes on into grown up world. And like she puts a pad down so that the children's car seats do not leave an indent into she her leather. She takes them out. She takes them out. Yeah, she's bonkers. Really? But she basically gets in Maddie's face and is like, I'm hearing rumors of the two of you together. She's like, I just saved him. And she's like, okay, but you're not good enough for him. And you're happy here, right? Like you're happy here. <laughs> and and that was something too. And so Maddie's mom has a chronic illness. Maddie left the small town went to New York city to study, to be a concert pianist and something, something happens to her and she comes home with her tail between her legs. And it's just happy with her life in hearts and Creek. And it is what it is. And she's there to care for her mother. Her mom has 
I'm going to assume something like MS or yes. ALS or something. Right. Um, because her mom needs some extra help, like mobility help and stuff like that. Right. She's She uses a wheelchair. Yeah. At least most of the and time. And some other mobility devices. I think yes. there was talk about like a cane or something like that also. So Maddie's okay being this caregiver, but the sister basically is like, you can't go anywhere because you have to stay here to care for mom because I'm just too important and too busy to be here to do that. Right. Like, I need you, yeah, so I don't have to deal with any of this, like. Yeah, it it was a little bonkers. Like, it made me not like the sister at all. Right. Like, I, like, I really wanted somebody to just, like, vomit all over her. Fair. Fair. Um, but I will say, Gray's family is fantastic, and I love them so much. <laughs> love them so much. His sister, she, like, reads a room like nobody's business. She walks herself and makes... Because Maddie lives across the street. So the sister just walks across the street and is like, hi, we know each other. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so funny. Right. Um, but there's some great quotes from Gray in reference to, like, starting to feel this connection to Maddie. He says... What was it with her? Every time they were together, he felt a visceral connection. It was crazy and stupid and so damn good. And really, the chemistry that speaks to the chemistry of this book. I I agree. Like, um, at first, it's kind of like a cute story. But yeah, like, she does really well at, like, developing this kind of instant chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, and it, she doesn't let it smolder. Like, it pops, and it it is fierce, and it's intense when it starts happening. Um, and so they're sneaking around because Maddie doesn't want anyone in the town to know they're together because she doesn't want it to get back to her sister. Right, and, it's, and that's kind of, like, the point of bringing up chairs. It's like, it's going to get there quickly. Right, and she keeps going to chairs, and everyone's like, oh, we saw you with so-and-so. Oh, no, just helping him out. <laughs> right just a friend we're nothing we're nothing and she keeps downplaying it so he starts sneaking her out of her house at night and the first time he does it he says stick with me babe i'll keep your soul clean and make your soul dirty he is such a dirty talker such a delightful dirty talker um okay so uh what What did you think of um, Aunt Gloria, the aunt? I was I was confused about the situation, like we said earlier, like what was going on, Um, because I think you get at least 50 percent or more in the book before you realize that it was his mom's sister and not his dad's sister living with them. And then it's like kind of changes the whole like perspective and dynamic of the family yeah but she rules that family and those boys with an iron fist like she draws she doesn't you know give them any slack she draws them in and you know sit down be quiet um there's also another piece to the story where so gray's dad comes at him and says you know you didn't have to work for anything you have like you do not know what labor and hardship are and in the midst of all of this, the family home is crumbling. Like, Literally. there are plumbing issues. The <laughs> roof is leaking. And um, Gray has the financial ability to just hire somebody to come fix it. Right. His dad will not let him. So he decides to fix it himself. Yeah, and he talks about his hands being insured for like $2 million. <laughs> but here he is, like, fitting copper piping together or something. <laughs> right, yeah um and his pr team shows up later on for a magazine article and that brings in some of the trauma and some of the maddie has to accept that she's with gray but he doesn't want to out her he's very cautious of who she is right and i think he's he's seen what like being in the spotlight can do good and bad yeah. So it's that to be her choice. Yeah. And some things happen. A viral video shows up. Um, 
And so it was not easy for Maddie to accept that she loved him, but also with him comes, you know, this other piece, this other world. Um, okay. So the siblings in the book, there's Tanner. He just sold his company. And then there's Logan. He owns restaurants in Boston. Cam is an NFL player in Boston. And Becca is the sister and she works at the local distillery. Do you have a favorite sibling? I know you haven't read the rest of the books. I haven't read the rest of them. Probably Becca. Cause she just, yeah, she, you can tell she's got all brothers. Like she knows how to keep up. Yeah, same her or Cam. Cam, he's pretty high up there too. Okay, so let's do our questions. Did you like this book? I did like this book. Um, who do you think would typically like this book? I loved this book and I actually loved this whole series. So read it. Um, who who would typically like the book? Um, definitely Small Town. Um, this is a really great small town romance and like family series. Family series, small town, lower angst. Yes. Um, so if you are just looking for a fun read with really engaging characters that are going to suck you into the world, try this one. Um, if you are a fan of like Claire Kingsley, but sometimes she gets a little too angsty, you should try this. If you um, like, I'm trying to think, we just did a whole episode on small towns, but it's a great small town rep. Highly recommend it. Um, would you recommend this book? Yes, I would. Same. I would too. Um, for more exclusive content, including short reviews, and if you should read it, join us on patreon.com slash bookcase and coffee. And if you think you have a, if you have a book, you think we should review for a quick shot of romance, send us an email to the bees at bookcase and coffee.com. Jenny, thank you so much for joining me for this quick shot of romance. Thanks for having me. Until next time, everyone. Happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 